So in my previous devlog, I mentioned that I was going to work on the procedural generation. But then I was like, nah, not yet. So instead, I decided to work on... G gameplay. I realized that procedural generation isn't necessary to build the gameplay I'm going for. So I decided that it's time to move to the next stage of development, which is using the systems I've built to create something more than just a tech demo. The first thing that I started working on was the FPS controller. Up until this point, I've been using Unity's FPS controller asset. It's good for prototyping, but it's pretty limited in functionality. I've always loved movement in Source and ID Tech games, so I decided to try and replicate it. As of right now, my controller uses acceleration and friction to produce smooth movement. All of this is being done through vector math, so one of the first issues I ran into was figuring out how to fight against momentum when changing movement directions. Unity's implementation lerps the movement speed, but since the speed is one-dimensional, there's no momentum when changing directions. Instead, what I ended up doing was lerping the input direction itself. Usually, direction vectors should always be normalized, but I think it's fine for my use case since the input direction gets scaled anyways. After figuring that out, there were other issues I needed to solve that were rather trivial, such as maintaining momentum in the air when nothing is pressed, or canceling out momentum when colliding with objects. Maintaining momentum in the air is as simple as capturing the last input direction and applying air resistance to it. Canceling momentum can be done by taking the dot product of the input direction and the hit collider's normal, which tells us how similar the two vectors are, multiplying that by the hit collider's normal, and finally, subtracting that from the input direction. Since normals are normalized, we need to scale it by the dot product, which in turn will allow us to zero out the necessary velocity. The result? Velocity will be canceled out at every angle for every collision. The pink ray on the right side represents the velocity. You can see that before this change, it doesn't get zeroed out, but with the change applied, it works as intended. My controller currently doesn't support air strafing, but I plan to add it at some point in the future. The next thing I decided to add was rocket jumping. Modifiers now have a knockback variable that push the player backwards with each shot. And knockback stacks, so shooting a bunch of projectiles at once will cause a rocket jumping effect while shooting with a higher fire rate will cause the player to levitate. Using the beloved dot product, we can calculate the amount of knockback for both vertical and horizontal velocity. Also, I added a new modifier. It's a bomb, and it explodes. What the f and finally, I added a new modifier type, and that's the trajectory modifier. This is something I actually worked on months ago, but I couldn't get the direction vectors to work correctly. So this past month, I revisited the problem and was successfully able to get it working. The trajectory modifier contains a set of functions that compute a predefined path for a projectile to follow. I only have a small set of functions that can manipulate each direction, but I plan to add more as I expand it. Though, with the little parameters I have, there's already so much flexibility to the customization. For this month, I plan to add more projectile types and expand the trajectory system as well as implementing air strafing. In the last devlog, I said that I'd get to refining the flying turrets AI, so I might look into that this month, but we'll see. That about wraps up all the changes. If you'd like to try out the tech demo, there's a link in the description with the latest build. I decided to make this devlog a little more technical, so if you're interested in the style, please let me know in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.